Paul, it's the Peel to Douglas Walk, the 47th Peel to Douglas Walk next Sunday, and I believe yet again the event's threatened somewhat by a lack of marshals. What can people do to help? Well, what we're looking for, we're looking for uh, up to 30 marshalling posts which need to be filled uh, throughout the 10-mile uh, uh, route. And um, what we're looking for is people to, to volunteer, to spend some time supporting the event and, in, and ensuring uh, that... Uh, things go off safely. Um, now that can be anything from up to a couple of minutes help at the start of the race uh, at Peel where obviously the other competitors are very close together. Uh, some very simple straightforward marshalling uh, duties there. Uh, further along the course we have for uh, some of our more experienced marshals. Uh, some Why is it that uh, every time we have an event on we're short of marshals? Is it because people are, are more selfish and not prepared to give up their time or is it some change in circumstances that requires more marshals? Well there's, there's, there's two things there. I mean obviously now we, we certainly do require many more marshals to run our road running events. That's one thing for sure and that's, uh, that's uh, something which uh, we can talk a little bit more about but uh, equally I think it's quite uh, uh, most race organizers uh, experiences that uh, marshals do tend to volunteer uh, very close to the event um, sometimes it's competitors who are maybe considering competing and maybe become injured or for one reason or other can't compete so they choose to to marshal and want to get involved in some way in the event uh, but also some of our regular marshals come forward just a few days before to volunteer. It's always, um, I've learnt now organising races over the last uh, six or seven years is not, not to panic too much at this stage uh, because uh, we, we do tend to get a, a good number of uh, marshals come forward uh, towards the, uh, towards the sort of near, nearer to the event. But so obviously it helps us as organisers to have people to volunteer as early as possible because that reassures us that uh, we can cover the essential marshalling points and uh, it also it reduces our anxiety because obviously inevitably uh, if it comes to a few days before the event and we're, we, we are very short of marshals then obviously one thing uh, in a worst case scenario it's not happened yet on the Isle of Man thankfully but it has come very close to us having to uh, to cancel a race. On do you, and do you think that's going to happen? Well it very nearly happened on a fell race very recently and, and it went right down to uh, literally hours before uh, when the race was, was on the verge of being cancelled. Uh, we, we have to know in advance of the race starting 24 hours before that we've got the race uh, marching points covered and that's uh, an essential mm. Uh, uh, part of uh, you know the, the 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 safety of running events these days. If I remember correctly, the the first event that you organised was the two thousand and two um, Castletown to Douglas to Castletown run. That one's fallen by the wayside now. Several other road races have. Can we continue to race along the Peel Road, which I think is the A1 road, yeah. uh, one of the main roads? Sunday morning is no longer the quiet day it used to be. Oh. Uh, are you confident that we can continue to do so? The Boundary Stroll is another event that's fallen by the wayside. Well, that's right. We have to continually review that year in, year out uh, for the runs and the walks. And we, we know that there's a national trend now that uh, road running and road walks are, are disappearing from the main roads. They're uh, diminishing in numbers or they're being pushed to uh, some of the quieter uh, areas. For example, industrial estates, road races on, on uh, quiet industrial estates are becoming more and more common. Uh, and there's much more of a trend towards larger mass participation events, safety in numbers, mm -hmm. uh, they're becoming more and more common. And back in 2002 when I first started race organising, uh, uh, the year before in fact, on January the 1st 2001, UK Athletics, who were the governing body who issued race permits, um, established new safety standards, uh, race organisers, uh, uh, it was mandatory for them to uh, complete uh, risk assessment appraisals, uh, documentation, which organisers had to uh, submit before a race. And what those, that documentation uh, demonstrates is that the race organisers have been over the course. They've identified all the uh, risk areas, such as um, Pelican Crossings, entrances to, um, to, to petrol stations for example, road mm. junctions, narrow bends, high sided um, hedges, all the things which constitute as hazards and as a race organiser before the race happens you have to identify these areas and say exactly what you're putting in place to minimise the risk. So that could be just simply putting a, a caution runner sign up beforehand 
Uh, it could be uh, placing a marshal there in more extreme situations. Uh, it could be a policeman. It could be, uh, and in some events, uh, involve road closures as well. How uh, cooperative are the police? Well, the police are very, very supportive. Uh, and I think what we have to be is, certainly for myself, very proactive. What I do is I contact the police well in advance. I talk to them about the event. I talk to them about the risks and I tell them exactly what measures I'm taking to, um, you know, to minimise the risk. And if um, you know, we do require support uh, at events, they will always do their best to, to turn out uh, and, and support us. At the one, fi one final question, Paul, uh, mm. is about the use of pavements. Um, yeah. When I came into the sport, you were actually considered to be cheating if you used the pavements because mm. the courses were measured from the road. That's a lot of right. car drivers would say to, to us now as athletes, why are you running in the road, why aren't you using the pavements? What yes. are the rules? Well, running on the road is fine. What we, what we say to, um, to our competitors is obviously we, we stress to them before the race that of course they must keep in single file, they must keep well into the edge and, and obviously uh, in terms of overtaking that they must actually only do so uh, when visibility is very clear. Uh, what's important, I think, to remember in a race, and, and when we look at marshals, when we look at signs on the road, is that we all, and everybody involved in a race, whether you're taking part, whether you're a spectator, whether you're a marshal, or whether you're driving on the road, however the race affects you, everybody has a duty of care. 